for a billion customers around the world. It's the most popular operating system of all time, I think because of the flexibility that it's shown. Windows has continuously adapted to an always changing technology landscape, even through some big shifts. The shift from client to server computing, the shift from 16 to 32 to 64 bit computing. Windows has even been ported and relevant to other platforms like Itanium, MIPS, PowerPC, Alpha, and now ARM. And I think it's that resiliency that Windows has shown over time that keeps it being very relevant as major shifts happen. When we were designing Windows 7, the shifts that were happening then were around high performance notebooks. So we knew people wanted thinner notebooks. They wanted notebooks with batteries that lasted much longer, notebooks that would resume from sleep quickly and get right back onto a network, or mobility features like that. So we designed Windows 7, and by the time we delivered it, the full it, the full Windows 7 version ran on even the smallest netbook and was wonderful on the most powerful, beautiful notebooks of all time. The trends that we're facing now have changed. Today we're facing trends around immersive internet computing, ultra-portable devices, and of course touch screens. So what Windows 8 is, it's a reimagining of Windows for those trends that we're seeing today. The web has been driving a lot of this. The web drives changes in the way we work, in the way we play, in the way we connect with other people. And of course, the kinds of devices that people are using today to connect to the web are different too. They're thinner and lighter. They resume from sleep immediately. Some of them have batteries that can last for weeks at a time. Many of them are used with a touch-only interface. And developers want to be able to build and sell applications that are tailored for that web experience and that run on those devices. That was the reason for Windows 8. That was our driving motivation to, to do this. So what I'm going to show you here is how Windows 8 looks, how Windows 8 works, and specifically some design considerations when you're planning future hardware for Windows 8. All of these systems are running real code, real code that's under development. We've never done this before. So wish me luck that they all actually work, and let's get started. Uh, the first system that I'm going to show you it, 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 there's a Dell XPS development station, and this is um, a special test unit that we use for evaluating touch screens and touch controllers. So here it is. This is the first click on Windows 8. I log in by swiping up to the start, the lock screen, and I'm right on my start screen. The first thing that you see is the UI is, is chromeless and clean. It's fluid and responsive. It works great with touch. It works great with the keyboard, so I'm, type, I'm hitting page up and page down here. I can move around with a keyboard. So we designed Windows 8 from the ground up to be excellent for touch-only tablets, and it works well with keyboard and mouse. The tiles that you see here on the start screen are live. These represent your apps, your people, your contacts, the information that you care the most about. You can arrange, group, and name them however you like. And that first start screen experience is really personal. It puts you at the center. And without even having to open any of those tiles, you can quickly see tweets that are coming in, or new email, or notifications that I'm tracking with a newsreader, for example. It's all presented to you immediately without even having to take that next step. Let me launch one of these apps, and you'll see what it looks like. So I'm going to scroll over and launch a weather app. The first thing you notice is that the apps are chromeless immediately taking up the entire screen. Every single pixel on the screen is there to represent your information. There aren't title bars and system trays and scroll windows. The application really comes really to light as Windows quickly fades to the background. And you think well, that's a, a really fun user experience. The other thing to note about this app is it's created on Windows 8's new application platform for apps that we call tailored apps. Now this application platform is based on HTML5, JavaScript, and CSS, the most widely understood programming languages of all time. These languages form the backbone of the web, so that on day one, when Windows 8 ships, hundreds of millions of developers will already know how to build great apps for Windows 8. These apps are great for consuming the web, and they work on all of the form factors that I'm showing here. So let me show you how easy it is to launch and switch between these. All I have to do is swipe in from the side, and you see the Windows controls appear. I can touch Start. I can get back to my home screen. And let me open my Twitter client, for example. I can swipe in from the side, touch Start, and maybe look at my newsreader. So I'm in my newsreader app. Swipe in from the edge, 
touch start, maybe open an investment. I think you get the idea that edge UI on the, on the right hand side of the screen is what's controlling the start screen and also launching new apps. What's going on here is those apps are actually all still open. By dragging them from the left side of the screen, I can easily switch between those apps by just dragging them like that. So the Windows UI, so it's cool. I think it's cool. We've been working on this for quite some time. Well, watch this. If you're holding a tablet, these controls are right under your thumb. So it's right the way you would have a tablet. You can slide your finger, quickly get back to the home screen, and they're right underneath my thumb. So that's the, that's the design of the tablet. Here's how you actually control the apps themselves. So if I'm in my newsreader app and I swipe up from the bottom, I can get to the controls that control the app. So I've added a pool hunting piece to my newsreader. So what happens is Windows is working on the sides and the apps work from the top and bottom. But the neat thing is because those controls are easy to get to and then quickly get out of your way so you enjoy that full screen experience. Now that full screen is a 16 by 9 wide screen. And we think that's a really good orientation for the screen because it's excellent for watching high definition video. So let me go back to start and launch a video. This is a video of my favorite paragliding spot back in Issaquah, Washington. And you can see it immediately launches, it takes up the whole screen, and I'm enjoying my video. What's going on here is even cooler, is we have real multitasking going on. So as I switch between the other apps, if you listen, that video is actually still playing. So real multitasking, you see that video is still playing. And one of the neat things about uh, 16 by 9 widescreen is a feature that we've introduced in Windows called Snap. And Snap makes it easy to use two apps side by side. So if I drag in another app, I can drop it in the middle, or I can come to the side and drop it. Now I can watch my video while I'm looking to move. I can drag the video over like that and make the video small and have more space there. In fact, I can change the app that I'm working on just that easily. Drag this back. And so what we've got is a really great side-by-side -side story because no people are doing multiple things at the same time. So let me pause this video. These controls are really easy to use. Whether they're under your thumb or you're using them with the mouse, they're just there and they're quickly and easily out of your way. So the most important app of all of these systems is the browser. Something over 60% of most people's time is spent in a browser when they're using virtually any system. And so with Windows 8, we're going to be introducing Internet Explorer 10. Internet Explorer 10 is a browser that's optimized for touch. It immediately shows up in a full screen mode. And like before I showed you, I can drag it to the top and switch tabs. It's optimized for panning and zooming. You see if I come down here, I have a new um, keyboard and I can type in a a URL. In fact, we even have a new ergonomic keyboard that puts all of these keys right under my thumb so that I can thumb type easily while I'm holding a tablet. So we've done a lot of work to think about how can we make this better and more ergonomic and fast and fluid and really fun. That's, that's the part of the UI. Internet Explorer 10 is the best hardware accelerated browser out there. You can run hardware accelerated Flash. ActiveX, do in-private browsing, several features that most other touch operating systems don't support. But here's the big surprise. All of that works, and this is really still your PC. You really have access to all of the files on your system. They're just one touch away. You don't have to give up the control to get the new experience. So in this case, I can see the pictures that are on my screen on a traditional desktop. You see how fast that switches? It's not a different mode. Launching this is like launching the start menu. It's just instant. That's just how quickly you can get to another app. And in fact, you have the same control over your files from within an app. So let's say I'm here in my Twitter app and I want to post a picture. I can see all those same pictures, but now they're in a user experience that's designed for touch. So it's easy to scroll. You can see as I pick these, they're showing up along the bottom. I can unselect them very easily. So I have this familiarity and I have the same kind of control in my Twitter client at the same time when we get back to picking a picture. Because another thing that I was going to show you is you not only have access to the documents and files that are on your system, you can have app-to-app -app sharing. So these apps in Windows aren't islands. They can register themselves with the systems and say, I can share pictures, for example. So not only do I have the pictures that I have on my computer, this app, Photo Feeder, has registered itself to say, I can share pictures. So I'll go over here, 
I'll pick a picture of this cat, and right there I posted it to Twitter. No copying and pasting, no trying to save something to a desktop or a place in the sky. Apps can talk with each other. So when you have a system that has more apps, the system just keeps getting more powerful. And what's neat about this is that that familiarity, you can actually run side by side. So you don't have to choose between new and old. I can have that same Twitter plant here, right next to a desktop, if I want to, they can do new software that I already know how to use. So if I want that, I can have it, and if I want, I can be in this mode all the time, and all of it is controlled and fluid with touch. So that's Windows reimagined for tablets. You've seen the UI. I talked a little bit about apps that are tailored for web. And all of this is running on this 1366 by 768 widescreen with edge-to-edge -edge capacitive glass. But here's what's also important to, to take away today. We did not just design Windows 8 for tablets. When you're reimagining a system that a billion people around the world use, it's a big responsibility to think, how is this going to work on all of the other systems? Windows 8 is for hundreds of millions of computers of all different kinds, all different size screens, whether or not it has touch. Windows 8 is an upgrade for the entire ecosystem of PCs. In fact, we did that in two ways. In one way, we extended the trend that we started with Windows 8, but with Windows 7, on keeping our system requirements either flat or reducing them over time. So Windows 8 will be able to run on a wide range of machines because it will have the same system requirements or lower. Another thing Hello, we did, we built some from. intelligence into Windows to adapt from. the user experience based on what hardware you have and what you don't. So whether you're upgrading an old machine or buying a new one, Windows will adapt to make the most of your hardware. Here's an example of 